Today I am talking with Michael Zendel about the home and gift market seasonal trends. So we are talking about trends that we are seeing in the home and gift market for harvest, Halloween, and Christmas. And we're also talking about how the market is changing for those seasons in how they present what they are selling to consumers. And Michael is a wealth of information because he is the president of product design for a big gift company. And so he sees all the the trends that come in from different retailers. And I also get a ton of trend boards. So we are just chatting about what we've been seeing in the market. And it's a really interesting conversation if you are into trends or if you are into the home and gift market. So take a listen. And thanks again to Michael for joining us. So we had you here a couple months ago and you were talking about, um, you know, advice to people who are giving, uh, uh, who are approaching art directors and, you know, what freelancers can do to be, uh, to have, to work with art directors in a better way or, you know, in a more easy way. And that was such a fan favorite. So if you guys haven't seen that replay, it's on my IGTV or also YouTube. And so I wanted to have you back. Uh, will you give a quick intro uh, for people who might not know you? Oh, sure. Um, so my name is Michael and uh, I've worked in the product development um, industry for uh, I don't even want to say it, like 20-ish years. And um, I started out as a studio designer and I worked my way up the ladder to uh, you know, product manager, product director, art director. And now I'm the president of um, a small team of designers for a housewares company. Um, and I've worked in and out of that industry and around and about, you know, you know how it goes for a long, long time. So um, dealt with a lot of similar aspects to you as a freelancer and also as a full time person. And um, yeah, so been around trends and been around uh product for my life. <laughs> so, I anyway. love it. Yes. And we have a very similar, like, I mean, we see the same, I mean, trends are trends. If they're out there, you know, we're probably going to see them, but you know, we do tend to have a similar aesthetic and we're looking for some of the same things when we're looking at trends. So we always have a good back and forth about trends. Um, so my first question before, I, I hope we're going to talk about seasonal you know, I wanted to talk about seasonal trends specifically, like harvest and Halloween and stuff like that. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask, um, you know, just sort of to lay the groundwork. I know that some designers are really wary of trends because they feel like either one hopping on a trend is not being that creative and it's just kind of following along and that's not like the artist way, right? Or two, that trends have a short shelf life. And that means that if your portfolio has a lot of trends in it, then it's going to be out of date like next year or something like that. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts about, about um, you know, using trends in your artwork? So I've been thinking about this it was like my shower thought all week. Like every time I had a spare brain cell. And, you know, I talk to a lot of people on Instagram, like you do. I have my Instagram friends and acquaintances. And I really um, lately have been noticing, and I've spoken to you about this, how you kind of assume everyone's on the same page. And then you have these conversations where you're like, oh, they don't see things that way. Or they're coming at it from a different perspective, which I love because it sort of, you know, you check yourself and you sort of step back and say, am I thinking about this the right way? Or, you know, and I think one of the issues I've come across is that, you know, there's licensing artists with a capital L and then there's surface pattern designers. And if you are so driven to be a brand and you believe in your vision and your look and everything that you do to the point where it stands on its own, then I think you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you and, and, and on a bell curve, right? Like everyone knows the curve of like, there's a trend and then there's mid trend and there's peak and there's post peak. I think those artists live before and they feed into a system where they might actually be driving future trends because they're the dreamers 
and they're sort of unrestrained and they don't really have to answer to anybody but themselves. So they just do what they want. But the fact is, from where I stand, it's a closed loop system and it's symbiotic and it's um, it's not something that you can be on one side or the other side of, right? Like if you're out there and you're putting art into the world, it's out there and it will influence. And that's the whole point, especially if you're in this industry, right? If you're, if you're a fine artist and you want to sell three paintings a year at a gallery, great. Like you don't need to worry about your influence or copycats or whatever. But if you're putting stuff on product, that product goes on to, you know, into a warehouse, that warehouse sends it out to stores, it gets into people's homes, they share it by gifting to other people, it's out there, it's viral. So I really think that um, for, there's no way around it, right? Like you, there's no way yes. to go in and say, I refuse to do trends. And you also can't be so high and mighty that you think that everything you do will dictate a trend and you can't be so isolated to say I'm you know I'm going to shun this process because it's the way the the industry works so I think you have to maybe think less about am I in or am I out and more about like where am I like mm. where am I on this sort of like um environmental you know like this biosphere of trends like am I am I reading them before during at their peak, you know, obviously peak and post peak is tough because that's where everybody's in it, right? That's where you see it on creative market for $5. That's where you, you know, every, your mother knows what they are, right? That's what, that's. What yeah. They're. Yeah. That's ready. You're in Llama and Owltown, right? Like, <laughs> so, yes. yeah, I don't know if I'm like really answering. But no, I'm no, you are. No, that, that makes so much sense. You, I think that is, is like such an excellent point. I think there is a difference between, you know, a license, a, an artist that is trying to be their own brand. Like I license my artwork. I mean, you know, I hope that my style, you know, comes through, but I understand that I'm a pretty commercial artist. So my artwork, if you see it, you're not necessarily going to be like, that's definitely Elizabeth Silvers, right? I'm, I, I, I have done a lot of styles in my life. And while I have some stuff that I, you know, like to do in a certain way, I'm not necessarily like a super defined brand, but I license my work. And, but those people who are really like, my brand is all me, you know, like then do whatever you want. I totally agree with that. But for the most part, if you're working, if you're freelancing, if you're designing for print studios, if you're working, you know, if you're making products, you are going to be working with trends. And the thing that I would also point out is that, you know, as you said about the peak and, and, you know, the beginning and the end, that curve is way longer than people think right? That curve is five to seven years in a lot of times, you know, like the things that you and me see. Straight up, it's like a mountain range, like, you know, owls are in, owls are out. Oh, wait, they're back in a different way. They're back out. Like, you, you can see that with any of the major, you know, we could pull anything and say, you know, did it ever? Right. Tropical. How long have we been looking at tropical, right? And and it's not necessarily, you know, I mean, it's it seems like it's getting a little bit slower, but I could see it being reimagined and coming right back. So like it, it's these things, they last for a very long time. So to put something tropical in your in your portfolio or something that you're starting to notice that isn't going to be out of style next year, like it's you got some time, right? And if five years down the road, it's a little bit outdated, I would think in five years down the road, you would want new art in your portfolio anyways, because your style and your, uh, you know, abilities have improved, right? So, so if you're not changing out your portfolio, it's not like, oh, six months later, you have to just scrap everything you did at the beginning of the year. Like, it's more like, okay, well, yes, this is looking a little bit dated, but I, now I can do this better anyways. So I want to do something new, you know, that's my, my thought process around that. So, so now that, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was thinking the other the other day about um, like I was trying to put in my head like what are three trends that people would say are like, oh, I'm so overseeing that, right? And I was thinking like cactuses, unicorns, and donuts, and how we've seen them, seen them, seen them. But 
like just this last summer, they all turned into cool floats. And everyone thought that was new, but it's like, that's still a donut, that's still a unicorn, and that's still a cactus. But now that they're cool floats, oh, how fresh and exciting is that? And no one saw them as a rehash of an old trend. It was a pool float trend, but it pulled DNA from those other trends to make a whole new story for the summer when those icons themselves weren't necessarily ever related with summer. So, you know, right. trend doesn't just live and die and get buried. It sort of can feed, you know, it can morph, it can become symbiotic with other things that maybe they were never part of. And I think that, you know, like as designers, you were saying, you know, okay, well, you want to move on in your portfolio. I don't know about you and or anyone listening, but like, I'm so hungry. Stuff I did three months ago, I'm sick of, you know, I'm always, <laughs> always ready to abandon and move on. It's only the monetization that keeps things in a portfolio that the, the hope that someone might want it. But as a th creative thinker, I think you, anyone would abandon and move to the next thing because we're just gerbils that, you know, like you're constantly hungry for like, expression or new thinking or you know new ways to like come across to your audience so yeah I I don't totally agree and and also like as I have a lot of licensing collections and I started licensing whatever six seven years ago now so some of my first collections are like you know I'm definitely I'm like I'm over this I've posted this on Instagram seven, t 10 times over the years. And I've done this and I'm just like, so, so over my portfolio. Um, but if people haven't seen it, it's brand new. And we just, you know, people who don't work in this industry or, or don't have a lot of, let's say like clientele, they don't understand that there are so many stores that are still giving us the same trends that we were getting four years ago. And we're like, Oh, really? We're still doing this. Okay, cool. But that's because people are still buying it and that's their business. Like what, I, you know, that's, I'm not judging. <laughs> so like, so the stuff that I designed, you know, five years ago that I'm like, like, I can't look at this again, is still getting picked up because it's still new to someone else and it's still fresh to someone else. And it, it is still, you know, quality artwork to someone else, even if I've moved on personally, right? Right. Now, so. It's back to the beginning of the conversation, which is nothing I do and nothing you do can stop whatever the trend curve is, right? And especially for people who are working for a living, like the buyer or the retailer is going to tell you what they need you're not mm -hmm. tell them. that might be different in licensing where they're like you know feed, feed something fresh or you know what do you see because we're, we're looking for the next feminine grouping but in reality like the briefs come from the buyer the buyer you know went through a process with their trend people and their gmm that get it approved for floor space so if they come to you and they say uh, yeah, I'm just throwing this out there. Like, uh, we still need farmhouse. And you're like, God, it's been eight years of farmhouse. Nothing you can do to change that narrative. Like, they're doing it because there's some data in a system that says farmhouse sold and they want to recapture those dollars. So, totally. <laughs> and for licensing, I would say, like, I still, you know, licensing does still revolve around retailers. I get a lot of trend boards through my agent um, from retailers directly saying like, you know, it's, it's the manufacturers who have good relationships with the retailers and know that their products can sell in certain retailers are trying to cater to those certain retailers. So they're looking for licensed artwork that fits with what those retailers trends are. So I definitely, I get all those trend boards as well because, because people, um, you know, people are trying to license art to sell to Michaels or to whoever, you know? So, I mean, like I, as we said, you know, if you're that one, you know, that small percentage of people who are just their own look, their own brand, no, you know, like worldly input, like that's awesome. But there are, there's still a huge market for people who, um, who are paying attention to trends or who are, who are in, in with what, what retailers are looking for. So people like the high branded type artists, they're changing with the times. It's just a slower, you know, like I can, I could name and I won't like a, a, at least five artists in my career that have come and gone because they don't change and people get sick of looking at the same thing over and over. So like these brands, like, I mean, let's pick up, let it, I'll just throw like a, if you throw like say Jonathan Adler out there, 
his looks from the early 90s to now between being, you know, a studio potter and then a mid-brand and then, you know, now a mass market. High end. Mass market, but yeah. They changed entirely. And if you think like if he, if, if or, you know, Lily Pultz or any of them, if they just stayed what they were, the, the public loses interest. So they are in fact being influenced and changing whether it's palettes or trends or whatever, maybe even just like demographics, it changes and they change with the times too. But where you and I might be changing on a weekly or a monthly basis to get, you know, whatever it is out to like the hungry buyers of the world, they have a much longer breath because they own that story. So, but I mean, the reality is I'm just trying to make a point that everyone changes. If you don't, you're just dead in the water eventually. Right. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So um, that sort of relates to how trends also evolve, right? So one thing that helps keep those, as I was saying, sort of about like tropical or whatever, one thing that keeps trends lasting way longer than we maybe expect in some cases, not all cases, is that it sort of it sort of evolves into slightly different things. So um, in my October newsletter, there was a, a trend board for Black Magic Halloween, right? And we were talking about how that sort of, you know, we've been seeing like mysticism and like celestial and tarot cards and like reading the future, like crystal balls were big on greeting cards a couple years ago. And I mean, still are pretty much, um, you know, the constellations. So all this sort of like mystic stuff each year, it seems like a, a new sort of variation of that comes out. And, and so now like Halloween is picking that up and, and with the black magic idea of, of, um, you know, some, of some of those looks. So, um, Holiday trends is what I kind of wanted to talk about today. And so talking about that evolution and talking about what we're, we're seeing in, in for holiday trends, what are some of the holiday trends you've been seeing this season? I've got a list as well, but I'd love to hear what, what you're seeing a lot of. Well, so I mentioned this to you a couple of weeks ago where, you know, the one thing I've noticed, and it's not just this year, but it's, it's definitely been coming. It, it, it's not a trend so much that as we would acknowledge it as like icons and colors, but just as like a demographic trend is that um, I've been seeing the holidays more from what used to be decoration into more decor. So each holiday becomes more lifestyle and less, I'm gonna throw some trinkets out around the house. So what you're seeing, especially in the home markets is like, you know, things that would be considered maybe more mainstays like pillows and throws and trays, things that are larger, more functional items, but themed for holidays. Whereas, you know, maybe in the past it was like, you know, a stocking or, you know, more things that are more ornamental now are becoming more every day. And I, and the reason that's happening is this, like, you know, obviously the retailers want to capture the largest market share as possible with the longest breath. And, you know, we joke, we, everybody jokes about, oh, Christmas starts in, you know, October now. But the reality is COVID changed all that too, is like you, you have, now you have shorter windows with less people, you have to get more exposure or whatever. So I've, I've been seeing like particularly, you know, Halloween, as you just discussed, what, whether you think Celestial is a, a mainstay or not, it's certainly more palatable and more, you know, like Ouija boards and, and, um, you know, goofy signs and things like that are obviously a little bit more every day than like jack-o'-lanterns and skeletons and, you know, crazy, you know, gory, gothic, you know. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's softer. It's more, it's something you could see being out like maybe all of October and even le leaving October. And the same thing with Harvest, which even by its name shows you, they don't call it Thanksgiving, right? We call it Harvest because it literally starts at the end of and it August. Goes, yep. And it goes all the way until you're turning everything red and green. Right. Right. Whenever you decide to put the tree up is the end of harvest. And like you, you've even seen like white pumpkins transition into like winter looks because you know, okay, you pull the orange ones out and you put some like white branches in and now it's a winter look. Right. So I'm seeing that really on all the major money-making holidays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, they just feel more integrated and more, um, I don't want to say like acceptable because there's still risk involved in some of them, right? But 
they're not like these hackneyed, tried and true. Like, like I said, it's not pumpkin, it's not skeleton, it's not witch. It's a much softer sort of like emotional response, right? Like tarot cards and futures, and there's just something very like carnival about it, you know. And it 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 felt it feels just more homey to me than it does. Yeah, and you know something that I've been, I mean, and when you were bringing this up to me, I was like uh, agreeing with it, but I hadn't really crystallized that in my mind. But one thing that I had like very consciously noticed is that where people used to decorate their yards and their outdoors for Christmas, which they still do, of course, now in my like general area, my dr drive to drop my kid off at daycare. Halloween decorations are like everywhere. Like people didn't used to decorate their yards and have like orange lights and have like gravestones on there, whatever, you know, but people even like, you know, they blow out Halloween even much more than anyone used to do. It used to be like a couple pumpkins and maybe like a wreath that has like some witch's legs hanging off of it. I don't know. But like, you know, remember when the, the data came out, it was in recent years, like in, definitely in like the last two or three, but like, Halloween surpassed Christmas in terms of dollars spent at retail because obviously you're also, you know, you don't know how they break that down between like decor, lighting, ornaments. Um, but then, you know, Halloween also has candy and, and uh, stuff you would wear. It's, so it has like extra things in it. But the dot, I mean, I live in Salem, Massachusetts, so it's hard for me to not see Halloween. I mean, <laughs> I live in Halloween town. So it's, it's like that all over. But when you do go outside of, here to other neighborhoods or other cities, I mean, it's quite obvious that the holidays have taken on like huge, 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 huge dollars. And to your point, like Halloween is almost like Christmas in terms of outdoor now, right? Like there's all sorts of projector lights. And I mean, it used to be like one crazy neighbor that would do the haunted house. And now like every house has something. Yeah, totally. Um, so kind of going back to, to actual... Uh, well, you know, that's an, that's a good like retail trend, but, or, you know, how, how the market is moving. Um, but when you were talking about how, you know, the white pumpkins sort of transitioning between that is one trend that I have seen uh, a lot from a, a variety of retailers for this Christmas or for 2021 Christmas. Cause remember, if you're new to this industry, you're always uh, designing at least one year in advance, if not a year and a half. Um, sometimes two, not really two, but um, you might be thinking about trends for two years up in, in advance. But so for 2021, et cetera, I've been seeing this look of sort of, uh, and it's been called this in a couple of different retailers, is like holiday spice, which is like really fall harvesty colors for Christmas. These sort of like terracotta reds for red and greens are more like, you know, olive greens. And then with a lot of golds and, and um, deep like burnt sienna kind of colors and the idea of like cinnamon sticks and dried fruits and, and these sort of uh, like botanical bouquets. Um, sometimes gingerbread can come into that too, but that is like a, and, and then sometimes, yeah, the like maybe even white pumpkins and, and some of those type of icons, but for Chris meant to be for Christmas or maybe just sort of an, uh, sort of a bridge between the two. But I've seen that trend, um, coming up that in, in quite a few places. That sort of like lens, like, you know, going back to the Halloween story, but to Christmas, some of the tried and true icons. Now, I, of course, these things never go away. So we're talking about like higher level here. I'm not seeing Santa and snowmen. I'm seeing this softer everyday, like, you know, with this spice trend. That again, it sort of migrates out of Thanksgiving through to December and will probably stay through January or February as long as you're still in winter mode, right? So a lot of, you know, like the hot coke, how hot cocoa became sort of an icon or uh, gingerbread, like those are more sort of, um, you know, like they-, they Long lasting, right. They, they're not just specific of December 25th. Yeah, like it's not just Christmas day and it's not just, you know, uh, Roman Catholic tradition and it's not just, you know, uh, or, or also, you know, in terms of Santa, like people who believe in gift giving, like it's just sort of this nice, pleasant, overarching, like be together, gather together, share, you know, like it's warm and it's comforting but it's not in your face. It's again, more of a softer across. More livable. 
Yeah. yeah. But, you know, okay, there's plaid pillows and there's, you know, uh, throw and there's this, but nothing is screaming, you know, like jingle bells and, you know, there's rain gear on everything. Like, it's just much more palatable, I think, for like mass market. Um, but that being said, I think with Christmas in particular, um, I think everyone who shops for Christmas can tell, like whether your store's Target, Walmart, Kohl's, they can never put all their their eggs in one basket because you have to appeal to a lot of people. So I'm seeing, you know, most stores have at least three stories in Christmas. There will be the tried and true where, yes, you will find Santa and yes, you will find snowmen and maybe it's tweaked a little for 2020 or, you know, whatever, whatever they were going with. But then there's usually sort of like a, like mama bear one that's like in the middle, like you have Goldilocks that's like, you know, tried and true. Then you have like mama bear that's like, okay, well, people will buy this. And maybe that's, you know, more trend forward, like, um, like a Nordic story or a woodland story where like, there's no red, it's all green and, and green, green and white. Yeah. Farmhouse, the farmhouse, like spruce look. Yeah. That's a big trend that I've been seeing. Boxes and all that kind of stuff where it's like, you know, a general woodland theme. And then you'll have like baby bear over here where they know, okay, this isn't going to be the thing that brings in the most money, but it might be the lightning rod that makes us look different. That's like, you know, flamingos and uh, cocktails and pink glitter and aqua and mint and, you know, old Cadillacs and uh, VW bugs piled up with like brightly colored polka dot packages and things. And, you know, you could look at it as sort of like, you know, the boomer, the Gen X and the Gen Y or whoever the parent is buying this. Um, people break it apart all sorts of different ways. But I think what they're really trying to do is just appeal to as many people as possible. If you just did one story, especially in Christmas, it's not going to appeal to the way everybody decorates. So um, I'm seeing so many like micro trends within these like macro trends <laughs> where you know, yeah. Nordic has its own like multiple different things. Like some of it goes Scandinavian, some of it goes woodland, some of it goes, you know, very sort of like sweater pattern, you know, all those, those looks that fair isle stuff. Yeah. And the same with like the young, the young hip thing. It's like, I definitely see pink and mint and turquoise. And, and to be honest with you in recent years, there's always a version of that story too, but it takes on different permutations. Like cocktailing was definitely one, something I saw pop up where you get the, you see the blown glass ornaments of like champagne bottles and martini glasses but then again, that relates to what we talked about because that transitions you right into New Year's, right? And mm, like, yeah, so I just don't see anything in an island, right? Everything is got like merges together, yeah, yeah. So that those the bright trend that you're talking, or you know, the colors that you're talking about, that is, yeah, I've seen the bright trend in like a, a few different ways as well. And like recently, one way I've seen it is um, sort of as like the retro pastel look. Um, and then another thing that I'm seeing, uh, because I work with some retailers who kind of are geared towards like a young audience, as you were saying. Um, and so I get some kind of wild, <laughs> some wild Christmas trends and very like super, super trendy, um, or super young, I guess I would maybe say. Um, but like one that I've been working on recently is sort of a, um, like doing the set, the, the, how seventies are coming back and stuff like that, but like, getting Santa and Christmas into it somehow and like making it, you know, like very like a uh, mod and, and sort of like retro, but, but like in a bright, colorful way, not even in a muted, like uh palette way. So um, that's, those are some of the, the bright ones that I've been seeing. I could totally see that because that like, you know, the puppy seventies fonts, like urban out yeah. branding that would totally appeal to, you know, a hundred percent. That's what I was drawing like block letter seventies, like, but in like Mary and bright type phrases. Right. So, um, that, what that, go ahead. The room for all of this, right? Like not, not no one thing. Any of us are set. Either of us are saying is like the right or the wrong. It's just, I think evidence of all of this exists. Right. So like the, like whatever artist you are whatever designer you are like none of these choices are like the better choice or the right choice for your portfolio these all of these things exist it's just 
how you particularly want to add them to your portfolio or not. You know, there's plenty of people who would say, oh, evergreen trend, don't bother with like pastel and retro. But at the same time, you're also losing the opportunity to show that you get that, right? And I don't know how many Santa Clauses one person can sell. I know there are plenty of people at Surtex that like, that's their thing. Norman Rockwell, Santas and, and you know, that type of look, but there's only so much that, that the market can support. So why wouldn't you like, you know, just even for your own sanity, like take a day and have some fun and try a little to the left. You know? Yeah, totally. That does sound fun. I've been wanting to do, you know, there's so many, uh, well, they're all going to come in December uh, of all the Instagram challenges, like the advent challenges and stuff like that. And I haven't done any Christmas. I actually like to design my things sort of on season. I know some people are like, I'm Christmas in July and whatever, but I do keep it pretty much on season because I'm inspired by what's happening around me, you know? Um, so all these advent challenges um, are, are like coming up and I can never commit to 30 days, but, <laughs> or, or 25 days, I guess, as they usually are. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to play around with some, some Christmas icons for sure. Um, another thing just as like kind of a rapid fire, some more Christmas trends that I'm seeing, as you were saying, like the Nordic, the black and white, uh, like Buffalo plaid and, and yeah, just no red, basically like woods and, and green spruce and all that stuff. But then on the other end of it, the red vintage trucks, the red Buffalo plaid, the like, you know, very red heavy, um, um, trends are still, you know, we're still seeing that red truck, that damn red truck. And I don't like to drive cars. So that's, <laughs> I did a whole vintage cars thing for my client recently. And I'm like, I, can't draw cars but okay let's just try <laughs> and, and i just before getting on here saw like a client request to like edit it i mean we have a halloween one but like i have to do another truck and i'm like uh thank you. <laughs> um the, so yeah, the false kind of like spice holiday spice thing was kind of new this year. And the other thing that I was seeing that's sort of new ish this year, I mean, I've seen different varieties of this, but, um, is sort of the blue Christmas, the blue, uh, winter, um, but like deep blue, like navies and, and silvers. Not that, I mean, I see that sometimes, but I saw that kind of in a little bit more of a big way and sometimes sort of coming back to, um, like I know one one uh, trend board I saw is sort of like a winter solstice idea, you know, so really kind of almost bringing in that moon phases celestial thing, but just with the blues, the navies, the night sky, the north star, whatever, that, that whole um, vibe I've seen. I think um, navy in particular, you know, going back to trend reports, like just because Pantone calls something the color of the year doesn't mean at the end of the years, right? So... I think the navy influence is still from when navy was the color. Well, classic well, blue. You think that's that's a classic blue I, holdover? I love navy, so I'm glad it's having its moment. Navy for harvest. Lisa saying, "Yeah, we. I just featured. You know, we did um, uh, harvest. Yeah, like navy for harvest, and and I love it. I, I, I um, navy is like all over my house, so I can't I can't talk bad about navy. Before Thanksgiving, the whole sort of like I mean, my living room obviously outside of trends was, was navy and sort of rust orange. And that, if, I mean, you go on Pinterest and you Google navy and rust, that palette has been like building in terms of home decor. So you're seeing how that sort of maybe retro influenced a holiday. And again, you're, you know, okay, so you go to the store, you go to get, let's say harvest goods and they're sage and beige. Well, that doesn't match what people are doing in their home. So I think this navy mm. is really like, you know, there's a lot of Navy furniture out there, a lot, even like Navy hard goods in terms of like lacquered tables and stuff. So I'm definitely, you know, look on Overstock or anywhere that ca that's like mass market, Navy is like their number one color. So seeing it in Harvest to me is like a no brainer. And I, I really that is a great point. Again, Michael with the gems, this is a good point. Looking a way to, to kind of predict the colors and the trends of, of what's coming forward is to look at what's happening in home decor. In the past, we've always said, oh, apparel is where it's, you know, runway fashion, and then it trickles down to all the different things. Now with the internet, everything's kind of like on a real quick loop, like all together. Um, but 
home decor trends are still kind of slower build because you're not going to buy like a couch that's like whatever the hottest color this month it takes a while right so slow so looking at home decor trends and then thinking that you know with your point that um you know all this seasonal stuff is starting to build towards more lifestyle rather than just like you know plunking down a like decorative statue for like a month out of the year what is happening in home decor how can seasonal match to that and that's a great point i, mean, I love you it were, even when you're talking about story i was thinking about like the that sort of um desert palette that's been hot for so long where it's like you know a dark burgundy camel and like a carn uh, like a, a salmon -y pink and like yeah yeah mm -hmm. terracotta yeah totally was carrying a bunch of ornaments that were in those color stories and i was like that's like a no-brainer but that how it might in itself be still a little risky but next year who knows it'll be where it'll go because you're seeing it all over the place those colors even though they were spiked as like hot maybe six months to a year ago like it takes a while for people to accept them as the norm see them mm -hmm. degrade them in little places and, like i wouldn't be surprised like you know, yeah thanksgiving's gonna have you know rose pink and uh oh yes dude what why they need to i mean we're just we, we know what's happening i mean so that actually brings me to my n next point um which is that i know that designers sometimes can stress out about creating something that would be on trend for 2021 or potentially 2022 um especially if they don't have access to trend boards that we do working with retailers um but i feel like you know there is not really usually it's never wiping the slate clean, right? The, have you ever even seen a really quick burn, like fad, I, rather than a trend, let's say a fad of something that is like so hot for, for whatever, 2020 or, you know, whatever, whenever the year was. And then the next year was like, absolutely not a thing. Um, I'm, I don't, that just doesn't happen. So if it's good this year, it's going to be good next year. You don't have to worry about that. I wanted to talk about, well, this is, uh, like sort of related, but the, the thing that I absolutely didn't see at all last year and that is brand new this year. And tell me if you saw it last year, um, is those, uh, those Christmas gnomes. Oh, <laughs> but you know i honestly i did not see them at all and and i even saw someone on facebook being like i'm so tired of christmas gnomes and i am too because i'm just not into that look but i did not even see them until like the surtex and uh atlantis mart at the beginning of this year so therefore you know they weren't in christmas 2019 at least not that i saw at all and even having seen them at surtex like i had a hard time finding um, like online references of products that were already in stores. It was still like things that are being developed. So um, now they're coming into stores for this Christmas, I guess. And I'm thinking like, it's still, uh, it will probably be around. I mean, even though it's kind of a, a quirky one, like it's going to be the next, it might be the next like, you know, vintage red truck. And it's just going to be here for another five years. And it's like, I mean, it's not my favorite, but. So let me drop some bombs on this one. <laughs> it was it was definitely around last year, but I believe, um, you know, where a lot of times uh, designers will create like flat art that then becomes product. I believe the way those happened was um, a bunch of soft good dolls, if you will, like the soft sculptures um, were found some in China and they made it to one retailer and then another retailer saw them and they sourced them. And now what you're seeing is people showing you those soft goods and saying, can we have decals made to put on? plates and bowls and and wall decor and stuff so i almost feel like it was flip-flopped it was sort of surface design emulating a product versus product using surface design but yeah yeah they are now i just had to do a halloween version uh, <laughs> they're becoming like all year round Bring yeah but i think you know the problem with them is that they're they're you know they're based on i think a scandinavian kind of archetype so they all look the same no matter who does them because like they're just a nose with a hat and a certain shape and so i mean i've seen multiple versions of them and it's just like it, it i don't know it's one i probably wouldn't go down the road of even though if it has legs i don't know what any designer could add to that that would be i don't know 
I shouldn't say that. There's plenty of smart and creative people. They can come up with all sorts of ideas, but it just, I see that I'm with you. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> but you know what? It takes me a while. I'll, honestly, like I see these trends early. I mean, I, I kind of don't think I'm going to go there with this one, but I see, see trends early um, and I, I feel like I'm good with spotting them. And then I don't participate in them like really that much. I'm not a person. It's weird because you would think as someone who comes out with trend boards and who's always talking about trends and who can really point them out that I would be an early adopter and, and it would be great for, you know, I mean, it would be great for business for me to have these things, but I do take my time because I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not too into that. And then as I see it, well, I still take, it takes me time to get used to things. So maybe next year i'm gonna be like oh i could see how this could be cute and maybe i'm gonna be i'm gonna be all up on the gnomes but we'll see <laughs> uh cynthia says i kind of want a punk rock gnome for my lawn yes there we go that's the one see punk cynthia can make it punk rock because this girl's got some rock you know she can do the rock stars so like the zombie flamingo have you ever seen have you seen the zombie flamingos oh i haven't seen i've seen i no i have not seen the zombie flamingos pink flamingo plastic pink, pink flamingo but it's black with red led eyes and then the bones like painted onto the outside of it <laughs> <laughs> but it's a flamingo and they are but they're like the full 1950s plastic ones and you stick them on the lawn like a giant flock of zombies <laughs> oh my god i swear i love it why not you know why not um Cool. So let's see. I'm just looking at my notes. We so basically don't worry about whether, you know, predicting the future because the future is now. It's going to it's still be here next year. Don't worry. Um, well, so and oh, sorry, go ahead. With the whole future like this, this I thought about this when you were talking about have you ever seen something come and go so fast? And like the reality is like we're all part of the Internet of Things, right? Like we're all it's very rare. You, you have different experiences for me, but like, I don't really have any um, private label clients or retailers that have a dedicated one person trend guru that dictates from like a mystical ball what's going on. They are all on Pinterest. They are all shopping the same local stores and this and stealing ideas from Etsy and you know, whatever, it, wherever everybody finds ideas, they're all the, the resources I have and that you have are the, they don't have any more than we do. They might be able to go to, well, used to be able to go to high price trend shows or, you know, fly to Paris for a market or go to Vegas, but like they're not around anymore. So these buyers are still looking at paper source and, you know, urban outfitters and anyone that you consider sort of like a riskier venue with like a specific look, like that's what they're doing. And then, you know, the middle road people like Coles is looking at Target, Target is looking at Coles. You know, uh, Ross looks at TJX, TJX looks at uh, Big Lots, like they're all just sort of s shopping each other and looking for like the best inkling of an idea. So if you're out there and you're a consumer and you're looking, your data is the same exact data. So just trust your instincts. And the reality is the internet has shrunk everything to so small that there's no gap for these mistakes that we were just talking about, right? Because if it was a mistake, they would have known it was a mistake before it even hit the floor, right? So that's why you're not seeing these like flash in a pan kind of things because there's enough evidence out there and enough safety nets that people know, okay, I'm doing gnomes or I'm doing trucks or I've seen, you know, like it's, and if it isn't, if it isn't known that day, it's the virus and everyone will be on gnomes you know, the next day. So that's- yeah. Totally. I agree. I totally agree. We are, we're all getting it. And, and yeah, there basically the, the earliest that you can, you know, the, the way that to get ahead of the trends quote unquote would be like, yeah, Heimtex in Paris or is that in Paris or in Germany? I can't, yeah, I think it's in Germany, but yeah, some of the European design shows are, are where that are like, were more traditionally avant-garde. Right. But again, with the internet, and everything being online. And then obviously with COVID, that's, you know, its own wrench, monkey wrench, right? But like, it, it's, you know, we are all looking at the same resources. So I love that. Um, let's see. So we talked about, basically, is there, 
I, I'm, I'm so happy that we did this. Trisha made a comment of we should do this every month and we need a podcast. And Michael has been talking to me about this idea of trends with friends for a while, which I have not launched, but um, here we are. So maybe maybe trends with friends is, is coming to a theater near you. But um, is there any last hot tips on trends that you want to share? Anything else? I mean, you've given so much information. Don't get me wrong. But if you, is there any other or just things that you were seeing? Can we talk about cottage? Cottage core, what's going on with that? Tell me about cottage core. <laughs> I just literally saw this last night. That that oh, where was I? oh I was I was on a wild apples um in, uh, Instagram and I was going like you know I hadn't looked in a while so I scrolled back and they were talking they had a whole video about cottage core and I was like oh is that something we should do at work and then as I scrolled through it I realized oh we've done this it's just that they applied a new name to it and called a different thing Amy mushrooms Bush, um well. Uh, Sarah McNabb did a whole like uh, um, evergreen prompt where they're three by three evergreen. Oh, Shannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bellflower, like, uh, I, think it, I don't mean to misquote anyone. So if she's listening. I don't mean to like do that. But she she did something that was like about doing evergreen trends. And I think the first one was uh, like wildflowers. And the first thing I thought about when I looked at this like brief on Cottagecore was like, oh, my God, that's just like that brief that she had done and it's just like these projects that we had done so that this is actually really great because it shows you how like sometimes the cart comes before the horse like sometimes people are doing like wildflowers and mushrooms and they're all sort of like in their own buckets and they do sort of relate to each other but it takes one person a retailer a licensed agent to go okay all of this has dna that goes together let's call it this right and they research a name they find out it's not trademarked and they say okay, let's you and I are here going, oh, cottage core is in, cottage core is in. And just in that one example shows you how none of that was planned, none of that was laid out. It's just how viral one thought leads to the next thought, leads to the next thought. And, you know, here we are going, should we be on that? It's like, well, okay. <laughs> Network. We are on. Yeah, exactly. We're totally, we've been on it. We've been on it. No, I mean, I'm not drawing. Yeah. Like, I think there are some different aspects to it that I haven't fully expo explored. I mean, I've heard this term in the last like six months or so, but yeah, it's, um, but I, I need to like dig a little deeper into what really is all about, but you're right. It's like, it's like mushrooms and wildflowers and like little worlds kind of, isn't it sort of like, you know, like you have a house made out of a mushroom. Like if you're, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's the gnomes thing coming through. So, um, so yeah, and that is how I actually like to use trends the best, right? I like to, I have this whole training, which actually I'm going to talk about something at the very end because I just la launched a oh, Black F Friday promo. Um, but one part of the training that is in my uh, successful licensing collections course is basically how to use trends to uh, be, to spark your creativity. And it's the same exact idea. It's listing out all the trends you can possibly think of, anything that you've seen in stores, just a whole list. And not that you can do this. You can't do this very often. You do it once a year or something like that. But everything. And then sitting down and drawing lines between putting categories to them so like what are all you know like okay whales and octopuses and octopi and mermaids and whatever and it's like those are all ocean themed okay and then what about all of these and what about all of these and seeing the connections and then that's what becomes like cottage core right exactly it's mushrooms and wildflowers and strawberry plants and I, I don't know what else but you know then it comes to be okay i can see how that could all go together in a certain bucket and and then you've come up with the next thing, right? So, and, and honestly, trends will go that way. Even if you're not cutting edge trendy, because they're always looking for a slight evolution of trends because everything just slightly evolves. Whatever you figured out, someone else is going to figure out and you're going to be a bit ahead of the trends. That's what I really love about trends, using trends to sort of, you can predict the future if you pay attention, right? Really, with Cottage Core, it's, um, in my opinion, that is an extension of, you know, you can go back in time and go, oh, it was Shabby Chic, and then it became Farmhouse, and then it became Joanna Gaines, and then it became this, and that's the stuff to retain. So they need that sort of, you know, rustic, farmy, feminine thing, but, you know, you'll, you would probably, uh, you know, in a fictitious world, a buyer was probably like, I don't want to see cows, I don't want to see sheep, don't show me a rooster, don't show me a farm, but what else can we do in that? And someone was probably like meadows and prairie and wildflowers. And they were like, oh, awesome. Let's go with that, you know, and 
now it's got a name and all right so look for prairie dogs next season right like that's all you you know you put that together and then you add a couple other things from your own mind of what goes in that category and then you've got the next big animal right that's how i that's how i figure it out um awesome well uh i did sort of interrupt you is there any other hot tip trends before i like threw cottage core at you but if you have anything else let me know <laughs> Or, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to you about this, like, you know, COVID the disruptor came along and I think we're now only just in my, in, in my gut, feel like we're only just getting back to a point, you know, with retail sort of reviving, we're starting to get back to work, that those trends are really back up. Everything was like, so I struggle as much as anyone else to find cool new things. Um, I don't really know what's going to be for spring yet, and it worries me, but I know that one day I'm going to wake up, and it's going to be there, and we're all going to participate in making it what it is. So I would say just don't fret, <laughs> don't worry if you don't see it, because it's ever, it's ongoing, it's, right? Like, it's just this matrix that you have to tap into, and it it's a back and forth, right? I was, I was, <laughs> like, I, I'm like a metaphor queen, <laughs> so... <laughs> I love it, man. I'm all about metaphors. What do you got? <laughs> like a coral reef, like the design world. So you have this like beautiful stuff, like coral. And, the, and you think like, oh, you know, as a scuba diver, isn't that beautiful? And you think of it as this isolated thing you came to visit. But it's actually like it's the fish that feed the coral and the water and the ocean and the scuba. Like all of it is together. And without that person viewing it, you don't even know it exists. So it's like partially the, you know, the customer, partially the supplier it's all of us participating. So like every time I sit down and try to like make sense, of it, I loop myself into a circle and realize like, you know, it's all just this one giant animal and we're all sort of symbiotic in its success. And the failures aren't really failures. They're just missteps, right? Like you just get back on the animal and you look again. So I, yeah. I it to be, you know, to designers and just be, I don't find it daunting. I don't find it, you know, any sort of cheating. I don't feel like you're, you know, relinquishing your brand identity or your creativity or any of that, those things that I hear on Instagram, people say, I just, I can't identify with it less, right? Like I don't find it, it's any of those things. I find trends to be, uh, maybe this hasn't come across in these few, I find them to be so exciting and like, they're like modern arch archeology span or like unearthing like hints and bits and pieces and putting them back together into a story and, I, I don't know. It's just being in the industry. It's so part of the DNA of how things work that like, I'm, I'm just all for get on the train and you know, you don't like it. Get off at the next stop. It's fine. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Nicole says she's getting requests for yaks and bison. That is a new one. I have to say, I haven't heard that yet. So that's pretty exciting. Like, you know, Midwestern Plains, I guess, you know, the, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, there we go. Um, all right. Well, so I just want to talk really quick about uh, because um, Black Friday is coming up, but I'm impatient. So I just launched today for a 10 day promo, um, which is a bundle of my two uh, successful licensing collections and earning with design studios are two of my courses and they are being bundled together. And the successful licensing collections is one that kind of dives into the trends a little bit. Um, I talk a lot about, you know, themes that are evergreen in licensing that you're always going to see are, well, I mean, you know, presumably for the next 20 years. Um, but then also how to use those trends, how to, how to find trends and how to, how to use those trends. And, um, so both of those courses are available together, uh, for, um, just the next 10 days for a lower price, 269. Um, they're both individually available, but Either one, if you buy it individually or as a bundle, my bonus for the Black Friday is that I'm doing two live sessions, uh, like Q&A sessions, which um, I've not done for these courses because they're mostly self-study. So um, so that is my promo. You can check it out in my bio. Someone asked, oh, someone first of all said that they just did gift wraps with bison. So, okay, bison's a thing. And two people is a thing, if you ask me. Um, and somebody also asked, what level would the course be appropriate for? So, um, basically, for 
both of those courses, my uh, it, it's pretty much that you know how to create artwork. Um, I don't teach anything technical, like how to use Adobe Illustrator or or how to draw or anything or how to put anything in repeat. Um, not that you need to know like technical repeats for either of these, but um, for successful licensing collections, I'm teaching you how to take your ability to draw and and potentially do a repeat and make it more uh, focused for licensing and how to make a really cohesive collection. And also um, like uh, my favorite part of the course is that I give you some like a step-by-step -step guidelines for critiquing your own artwork, both your single designs and your like full collections of like questions to ask yourself when you're looking at your design. So when you're totally stuck and you're like, I did this, it's not right. I don't know why it's not right. And the hardest thing about licensing is you don't have an art director. Cause like when I do freelance and I'm like, it's not quite right, but I'm just going to send it to my art director and they'll tell me what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, but, but in licensing, you have to like make it right yourself. And so that's, that part is a big part of uh, the course is, is how to critique and how to, how to make it right for yourself. So um, Michael, where can the people find you? They love you. Your yeah. fan favorite. <laughs> I obviously on my Instagram account, which is listed here. Um, I also have a website at michaelsindell.com that I worked really hard on over COVID. Uh, still a work in progress. And uh, I always feel like I give this caveat about my Instagram because it was like it started as my hobby. So like a lot of the things I talk about, I don't always feel like they're necessarily illustrated on there. But I, I'm always open to direct messages if anyone wants to chat and, you know, he also has a great spoon flowers shop. So, um, so you do, uh, like, you know, you're such a talented surface pattern designer. So you have these, these, uh, cool designs and spoon flower is also a really great spot to find trends because a lot of their competitions are very trend focused. So your designs on spoon flower are very trend focused. So challenges are, I think, some of the best creative prompts ever because there's really, whoever is doing it, and I would love to meet them someday, really does their research into like what will sell and also what is hot. Um, and so honestly, I really started doing it just because as, you know, outside of the industry, I just wanted somebody else to like magnetize some sort of like creative flow. And I don't know how I did it there, but I did. And I'm just so grateful that like they take the time, unlike other, maybe some other print on demand, they really seem to focus on like pulling creativity out of their boxes. So I, I would, I mean, not to go off on a spoonflower ramp, but like their trend and um, they're like, yeah, it is to see what other people are doing, what both professional, hobbyist, and, and the like. Like, it's great. I find them really helpful. Yeah, they do. They are great. They're right near me, actually, in North Carolina. There are only a couple towns over, and uh, and they're awesome, definitely. Um, and Nicole says your spoon flower is amazing, Michael. So that was a little testimonial. Um, Trisha also says that. So, um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you guys, everyone, for joining. If you joined halfway through, you missed some of the good stuff at the beginning. If you had to leave early, well, you're not listening to this part, but I'll have the replay up on my, uh, my IGTV and eventually it will go to YouTube with Michael's express permission. Bugging her about a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, look, you organize it and I'll show up and talk for an hour. I got no problem with that. You do all the other stuff because I got other things going on, right? <laughs> Never stop though, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, people, well, have an amazing weekend. It was good to see everyone. Thanks again to Michael for joining me. Um, in the description below, I have information on how to follow Michael, as well as information about my Black Friday Kickstart bundle, which is very limited. So if you're watching this like a week later, you've already missed it. Sorry, but you can still check out my courses. And I hope that you would like and subscribe. Share it with your friends if you find this to be interesting and useful. Thanks so much.